Hi, and welcome to the special presentation of the Triton School Override Question. My name is John Husinaitis. It's a pleasure to have with us in the first half of the program the superintendent of the Triton Regional School District, Brian Forget. Brian, nice to have you here. Thank you for having me, Jim. Uh, and I'm wondering, uh, Brian, if you can go over uh, some of the reasons why you feel that, uh, as superintendent, you recommended several budgets, yeah. and we did have um, Monique Relic from the school committee in Salisbury and the Triton Regional School District in, in March. And uh, she proposed that there were a couple of uh, budgets that the school committee was looking at at the time. And now the school committee has voted on a $41.3 million budget. Um, now I know that includes some reductions from what the school committee had voted previously. Can maybe you can go over for our viewers some of the reductions? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so it's, uh, the, the budget came down 750000 from uh, the budget that was tentatively approved by the committee uh, back on, I believe it was February 14th. Um, so the final budget that was voted on March 14th uh, comes down that uh, 750,000. Uh, it's roughly 2.6 full-time equivalent teachers at the high school. Mm -hmm. uh, there's one middle school foreign language teacher. Uh, there's a half uh, clerical support in the district office. There's a half-time um, data support specialist uh, that was reduced. Um, we've also reduced a special education program that mm. we proposed and still believe in strongly, uh, but it was a significant increase in cost. And while we believe in the long run it would save money, uh, it's a hard thing to, to propose spending $160,000 with, with, uh, without the confidence to know that it really would save money mm. uh, in the short run. Um, and there was also some additional spending for um, supplies and materials uh, that was backed out of that budget. So it's important to note that uh, there's, there's absolutely an impact uh, mm -hmm. in this budget as it was finalized, uh, but the reductions, uh, for example, the middle school foreign language teacher uh, is actually more a result of an aligned middle school and high school schedule that we've been working on for several years. Mm -hmm. um, so that is a necessarily um, directly budget related, mm -hmm. um, as well as the uh, 2.6 reduction at the high school. Um, mm -hmm. We have had a reduction in teachers over the years, and um, I can give you some more detail on that um, in, the, in the moments ahead, but uh, those are more uh, based on attrition. Mm -hmm. um, and as the student population decreases, we've slowly but surely been decreasing our, our teacher Now, going population. from a higher budget to this budget of 41.3 million, you've also been able as a district to as a district to avoid uh, layoffs of as many as 51 employees or so is that correct accurate? yeah so the, the the figure of 51 uh, layoffs was an early number we used um, that wasn't to scare people that mm -hmm. was a figure basic um, or we arrived at basically uh, assuming around forty five thousand dollars that we would save per layoff mm -hmm. um, that includes an offset for unemployment insurance that includes uh, assume that some folks would uh, we would have savings with uh, benefit packages mm -hmm. uh, but yes so that that figure um, certainly we would have to have a we are having discussions to plan for uh, if the override does not pass mm -hmm. or if the budget is not passed in uh, two or three towns and hopefully three towns um, then we are certainly still talking about mm. significant a uh, number of cuts that so we would have to make. So we're looking at uh, May 8th override in all three communities in Newbury, Raleigh, and yep. Salisbury on the same day. And Prop 2.5, uh, I remember being elected uh, in Lawrence in the school committee just after 2.5 hit in 1981. I was elected and sworn in 82. Mm -hmm. So I can remember the horrible cuts we made uh, yeah. in Lawrence uh, at the time. Uh, communities are allowed to go up 2.5% of the increased evaluation and no more. And so now this is an attempt to go above that number mm -hmm. to give the, the, the youngsters of the Triton District uh, the quality education that uh, you think and others think they deserve. Correct. And I, I think it's important to point out that um, that, that my job, the school board's job, the school committee's job is to, um, working with the towns, determine the budget. Mm -hmm. um, the decision of whether or not an override is required, uh, certainly we do everything we can to support sure. uh, decisions as they're made, but that's a town decision. The right. town decides whether or not they need um, the override to support the budget. Mm -hmm. Obviously, this isn't a budget. Uh, this is my 23rd year in the district, mm -hmm. uh, 13th year um, in the district office, and I've never seen an increase of this magnitude. Mm -hmm. um, it's been joked about, I keep using the term a perfect storm, but mm -hmm. it, it literally is um, the alignment of, of several different factors um, that have created a, a just a, an abnormally large budget increase this year. Now, viewers might rightfully uh, ask in, in, in all three towns, you know, why do Triton's costs go up when the enrollment, the number of students in the district are actually going down? It, it's a very good question. Actually, we spent um, considerable time last year um, answering this question mm -hmm. um, and it's certainly it's it's uh, a question where we're having a discussion about again this year so um, 
the, the reality is that um, we have continued to decrease uh, our number of staffing. So for example, if you take a look at the slide, um, it, if I go for a 15 year history mm -hmm. um, from 2002 to 2017, so all of these statistics are, are 15 years from 02 to 17, um, our student population actually decreased by 17.4%. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's a reduction of 572 students over the 15 years. Um, during that same time, our special education population is up 79 students, which is an increase of 23.2%. Uh, um, the so it, it, that that issue alone is it's it's a changing population um, and the cost of special I, m I remember looking at the school board budget yeah. school committee budget the cost of special needs students obviously versus significantly the higher increase right so we we've got um, a population an overall population dropping but an increasing number right. uh, of students who require more, more attention assistance. it's 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 an education they deserve right uh, we're required by law um, and we have to provide it and should provide mm -hmm. it but it comes at a much higher cost so yeah. that's a significant factor Another question that came up significantly, um, or consistently, I should say, is is choice adding to this issue? Mm. Um, so, from roughly 06 to 09, uh, we were approximately 100 more students leaving the district mm -hmm. than we had coming in. Um, and taking a look at this graph, the orange line is our students coming in. Okay. Uh, the blue line is our students uh, leaving the district. So uh, you can see back in that 06 to 09 range uh, where we peaked mm -hmm. in the wrong direction. And you can see now um, we've basically maintained our enrollment, un enrollment status through choice fairly consistently. Uh, to the point now where uh, for fiscal 17 we were double mm. the amount coming in than we had going mm. out. So the first, uh, that's an important point to make because a lot of people will point to choice as being sure. the root of the problem and it's not. We've fixed that. We identified it as a problem a decade ago um, and we spent a lot of time working on why answering and, and, the question. And those why. dolls follow the student. If they come into the district, they come in with money. If they go out, they leave with money. Exactly. And it's not a choice. Right. If a student leaves and they are accepted in another district, we get the bill right. through the Chapter 70 formula. There's no there's no yeah. magic yeah. there. So um, so with the, the choice question put to the side, uh, it really is, as we were just saying, these, these additional factors mm. um, that we're dealing with, with uh, identifying and, and educating these students. Um, anxiety and mental health issues is on a significant increase increase. Um, students living in poverty uh, who are homeless with a trauma history, uh, students who are English language learners, um, and also students in that 18 to 22 year old range mm -hmm. uh, who, again, are, um, are, are uh, deserved uh, an education and, sure. and uh, it tends to be a very expensive education. So with all those factors, um, we have decreased our uh, overall staffing um, and if we take a look at that 15 year period, we were down, um, we're up one district administrator and that's mm -hmm. a director of technology. 15, six, now 16 years ago, we didn't need a director of sure. technology. Yeah. Times have changed. Um, there's been some change at the, the school level, about a half an FTE down. Um, District-wide support staff, um, we're actually, it's a decrease of 1.4 mm -hmm. uh, total full-time for uh, our office support. And we've added two technology resources. And then operations, we're down uh, seven and a half full-time positions in the custodial cafeteria and overall maintenance. Um, but here's where we start to see the, the difference. Mm -hmm. um, and again, up until this point, it sounds like, okay, we should be going down in our costs. Right, right. Um, but with classroom educators in that 15 year period, um, we've had a decrease of 51 and a half full-time teachers. Wow. So we've decreased our, our classroom teacher population uh, by 24 and a half percent. However, as we mentioned, the students who are requiring additional services, additional attention, uh, those require uh, specific and, and a much uh, smaller student-to-teacher ratio. Mm -hmm. um, you spoke, you're an educator yourself, yeah. you understand the impact right, right. there. Uh, so um, looking at uh, educators providing, providing interventions, um, we're up 18 and a half um, classroom, or I'm sorry, I should say special education teachers. Mm -hmm. uh, we're up two and a half social workers. Um, we're up 28 and a half instructional assistants. So over that time, while we're down 51 and a half classroom mm -hmm. teachers, we're up 49.8 into, mm -hmm. we'll call them, if, you know, for lack of a, um, or in a broad category, um, close to 50 mm -hmm. uh, individuals who are providing much more one-on-one -on -one intervention. Right. So for that reason, there's no, there's no decrease in spending. Right. Um, right. We're not able to say, 
the, the population is decreasing, so therefore right. our, our teaching uh, and uh, educator well, numbers are going instead down. Instead of the cost of special needs students, obviously, are so, much more expensive, and that's, absolutely. that's the bottom line. They right. have to pay more for right. those uh, services. So we have, we have an almost equal total population right. of uh, educators, um, and then we uh, have to layer in the fact that um, there are two big factors that we need to talk about as far as that go to driving the actual cost of mm -hmm. why it goes up each year. So that we've, we've I've kind of answered why it hasn't gone down. Yeah, right, right. Uh, but the two big things, and this has been um, well documented, the Foundation Budget Review Commission mm -hmm. uh, has documented this at the state level. If, if you listen at the state level with education, big push uh, to fund these two factors. Mm -hmm. uh, but our health insurance has increased um, or we should first, I should first say it's, if you look at the 15 year inflation factor, it's 33.41%. Okay. Over that same 15 years, our health insurance has increased almost 183%. Wow. So this includes, um, we've changed our plan design, um, we've changed our cost share, the, mm -hmm. you know, the 70-30 right. um, was a 75-25 split between the district and employees, so we're now 70-30. Those are all negotiated with the con contracts? All negotiated with our unions, yeah. yep. Um, and we have a public employee committee mm -hmm. uh, that negotiates all of the health care uh, mm -hmm. collectively with all of the associations. Um, so during that 15 year period, mm -hmm. we have healthcare, which obviously we know is sure. a yeah. upwards of $7 million in our budget now, right. uh, is growing five and a half times inflation. Wow. Wow. So that is something that has absolutely mm -hmm. driven costs. And then um, we have our overall special education costs, as you've mm -hmm. mentioned here. Um, so in that same uh, 15 year period, it's grown three times faster mm. than inflation. So, so what, what about with the, uh, the town assessments? Why, did, why are the town assessments increasing um, so much years. Do these costs are driving those town assessments also? Absolutely. So we, um, we, our budget is funded through uh, state aid. Mm -hmm. uh, any kind of local revenues that we can um, create as a district, whether it be uh, special revenue, user fees, tuitions, mm -hmm. um, or it goes, it gets assessed to the towns. Mm -hmm. um, so there really isn't much else Right. Any other locations we have to get money from. Um, so with these costs, um, I, I should just before we go on to that question, I just the slide is is a, an important one because it shows the um, the 15 year period. The oh, there's a couple uh, um, uh, descriptors here missing, but the okay. the orange is healthcare and the yellow is special education. Okay. Um, so where we once had 76 percent for all other costs in the budget, right. we now have 64 percent of our total budget right. that's going towards these costs. Um, so, uh, as I mentioned, the, there are, we have very limited funding sources. Mm -hmm. um, it's either coming locally um, through fees we charge or it's through Chapter 70. So if we look over 15 years, mm -hmm. back to 2002, uh, we were actually getting 325,000, just shy of 325,000 more mm -hmm. than we got in fiscal 17. Wow. Um, we've made up a little bit of that. We're still 100, 200,000 less today mm -hmm. um, than we were now 16 years ago uh, mm -hmm. we don't have the 18 data in is this. that why there's an effort it seems to me just reading the paper and following the news there's an effort to to help regional school districts uh, it seems like the cities and towns have been relatively been taken care of pretty much with chapter 70 funding but the yeah. regional districts somehow are lagging behind in that yeah i would say that i, I think if you we talk to our city and town <laughs> counterparts uh, they would also agree that there's absolutely something broken with the chapter 74 formula. Formula, yeah. it's underfunded by billions mm -hmm. um, just from health care and, and special yeah. education alone but there is something unique mm -hmm. uh, about a regional school district in the way that we're required to assess our uh, cost to towns right. um, and there is uh, the auditor bump suzanne bump mm -hmm. uh, produced a report that was uh, published in October of 17. Uh, we actually had her out um, mm -hmm. with our five uh, state legislators and uh, had a regional finance forum back in January. Uh, and it was nice to see these, these things we've been talking about mm -hmm. for 10 plus years, saying it's not fair, there's something wrong, the formula Someone's is broken. Someone's listening now. Yeah. Someone's listening. <laughs> um, there's actually a bill at Senate 217 that's mm -hmm. trying to be uh, moved along. And it basically just asks the Senate to formally study and document this. We've got it in an auditor's report, uh, but we need to document it 
and truly study the formula to see why it is that it treats mm -hmm. it a, a region so unique. Uh, folks want to see, uh, we'll have to wrap up this section, but if so, folks want to see more about the budget, uh, they're welcome to go to the Triton website. Yep, um, so it's Triton School, uh, yeah, www.tritonschools.org, um, and then uh, in the top menu, uh, there's, a, there's a budget link, uh, and all this information is there, and certainly, uh, I'd also love to make sure that people know they can contact me at any time. Sure. Um, the main district office number or my email address, brian.forget at Triton schools.org. Um, always happy to have a conversation with folks and make sure they understand. Great. We're going up uh, so tremendously. It appears, I think, if an average person in the street would say these assessments are just out of control, yeah. what, what drives them? Um, well, it's interesting. If you look at uh, our spending over the 15-year period versus the assessments, uh, there's a huge disparity. And the reality is that, uh, as we were talking about with the reduction in Chapter 70, if we were, were getting less today than we were 15 years ago, mm -hmm. we're increasing at a larger pace than chapter 70. So uh, over 15 years, our spending has increased about 51%. Okay. The assessment increase to the member towns has actually gone up close to 82%. And this is the graph you have here. Yeah, so this, so this you can see at uh, uh, 15 years ago, the town's assessments made up 34% um, of our total, I'm sorry, the town assessments covered 60% of our total spending. Okay. Uh, chapter 70 covered 34% of our total budget. As of uh, fiscal 19, mm -hmm. um, the budget as presented, uh, the towns would cover 76% of the mm. total spending, and the, the Chapter 70 aid from the state is only covering now you know, close to 20% or 21%. And that's the actual highest of that whole 15-year period. We're now at the highest level right. of expenses. Absolutely. Towns. So we're, now, we're going in the wrong direction, wrong direction and I think yeah. that's the, the, uh, the message that regardless yeah. of where you go, region or, or right. any city or town, right. Chapter 70 is broken. So that's driving the cost. Obviously, the chap Chapter 70 formula that has not been fixed, and apparently yeah. there's, n there's nothing yet that's going to fix that at the moment. And we no, and we're working with, um, we have the District Communications Committee as uh, all town officials from the three towns, and we're working on ways to remedy that and yeah. take the matter into our own hands as a, as a three-town district and say, we can come up with another solution, and that's the hope that we can and do And looking that. at teacher salaries in the district, I imagine they're probably just as comparable as other uh, cities and towns and regional districts. Absolutely. We've, uh, the school committee has said every time we go into negotiations, we don't want to be the highest, we don't want to be the lowest, we want to be a competitive yeah. uh, place to work and attract uh, the highest quality teachers, our, our benefits or middle of the road, Aver salaries are average, and we, we do those comparables every three years when we do negotiate with the teachers. Well, I appreciate you taking the time to come in and explain a lot of these costs to us, and wish you the best of luck with the override question. Thank you, Jim. Uh, it's been a pleasure to have the superintendent of the Triton Regional School District uh, here, uh, Brian Forget, and we'll be back with uh, more guests in just a moment. Stay tuned. And we're back with the special presentation of the Triton School Override uh, Budget. And we are here with four representatives from Salisbury, Raleigh, and Newbury. We're happy to have Deb Choate, uh, who lives in Salisbury. We're also happy to have Wendy Zimmerman from Newbury. Welcome, Wendy. We're here also with the chairperson of the We Are Triton group, Jen Rekatenitz from Salisbury. Welcome, Jen. Thank you. And we're also happy to hear, have here from Raleigh, uh, Maggie Lemlin. Welcome. Thank Welcome, you. Maggie. Uh, Maggie, maybe we can start with you. Um, why should the folks out there be motivated uh, to leave their home on May 8th and vote for an override in these three towns? I think that the override is going to be necessary to develop and continue to have the community thrive. I just don't see a way around passing the override just to keep our communities at the standard that it needs to be, to be appealing to new residents, to mm -hmm. be appealing to families with young children, uh, to be fa appealing to my family. Now your decision to move uh, to Raleigh, I'm not sure if you're a lifelong resident or if you moved there. No, we've been um, here for I, ma 10 years. I imagine it has something to do with schools, the reason you, you went it there. It certainly was appealing to know that we had decent schools in our area. We were looking for a more quiet community with open space that we could raise our children closer to the beach, closer to nature. Mm -hmm. And so Raleigh really spoke to us. And we've set down deep roots. Uh, we've gotten very involved with the community. I work, I volunteer with the library. I have a Facebook page that's become pretty popular recently mm -hmm. um, for Raleigh residents and uh, we're determined to stay but we need it to be a community that's going to work for our family. Great and uh, Jen for you you've taken on this uh, this job of a chairperson of the uh, We Are Triton group and obviously yes. something motivated you to do that I understand you have somewhere around uh, more than a hundred volunteers who are helping this cause um, why do you feel uh, compelled to support this uh, this override uh, movement? Mm. Oh, I'll try to give you the short answer to that <laughs> sure. question. I'm also, I play, I have two hats in the, in the school community. I'm also the president of Salisbury PTA. Okay. So I care very deeply about our school sure. and the children in it. Um, you know, the 
biggest two motivating factors are my own children, mm -hmm. um, but I also consider all the children in the community mine as mm -hmm. well. We spent weeks and weeks uh, meeting after meeting, sitting next to people that we had never met from Rowley and Newberry. And um, what came from that was that we were all saying the same thing, that we, we believe um, that we need to support the budget, we believe in a quality education, we wanted this for our children, we knew what that meant. And obviously, banding together as three communities put us, make us a lot stronger and mm -hmm. resourceful than just approaching it as one. And are you happy, Jen, as, as a parent, as someone involved in, in the school system in terms of volunteering uh, with this, this effort that the school committee and the superintendent have done a good job at looking at the costs and cut the costs that they could cut to get to this point where it's a $41.3 million budget? you feel satisfied that they've done the good job to get to that level at this point? Oh, without a doubt, without a doubt. And I think that um, the whole process has been very transparent. Mm -hmm. uh, Folks were, are always welcome to go to the meetings, but even if you can't go to the meetings, you can watch them on the videos and follow mm -hmm. along. Uh, Brian's done a wonderful job of always answering questions, as as has the school committee. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you s send out a question and it comes back pretty quick with a response. Mm -hmm. What really spoke to me about this budget was that they didn't just take a budget and say, oh, here's all the numbers, mm -hmm. um, you know, X out what you don't want. They said, what do you absolutely need to all the schools and started from zero and worked their way up. Mm -hmm. And every school comes in with their budget, right? The the uh, school uh, councils that come in and they, they recommend the budget to the superintendent and, and all those are uh, dealt with, I'm sure, at the principal's level, at the, at the school level. So it's not as if, you know, the administration is creating this budget on their own. It's come as a bottom-up process, right, from, from the school district. From it's school. very much a team yeah, from team the up. principals and the principals take input from their staff right. and the school committee who, as a community, we we elect um, and then the administration at school. So it's a very big process. And now yourself, uh, Wendy from, from Newbury, um, you feel compelled to, to, to be here today to talk about this. Uh, you're a parent in the school district. Um, why do you feel that the, uh, the staff, the, the, the voters out there should, uh, should vote on, on May 8th uh, to support this override? Sure, I have two small children in Newbury Elementary. Uh, you know, I think the world of the school and the teachers, and I volunteer there every week whether it's in the library or in the classroom as mm -hmm. helping kids reading and so forth. I see the different levels that kids are at. I also see the job firsthand that the teachers are doing. Mm -hmm. and I can't fathom the cuts that they're proposing, you know, based if this override doesn't happen. Mm. It's, um, they're getting such a quality education and I see the challenges and the different levels that the teachers are dealing with. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we want to see that high level of standard continue. Now I know there are, there are probably some folks out there today, they're uh, on a fixed income or they're seniors or they moved into a 55 plus community, maybe in your community or in Salisbury or somewhere in, in, in the district, and they say, geez, I don't have kids uh, in school anymore, why, why should I go out and support this? What would you say to those folks that are out there who, who are thinking like that? I had that conversation many years ago when my father was alive when he was going through a similar thing in his town, and he said, you know, why would I vote for that? And I said, well, isn't that the whole reason that you moved to this town? Mm. You moved there for the school system for your children. I asked him to pay it forward to think about that, but also to protect his asset, to protect his home and the value of his home, because with a declining school system, it's not attracting new residents. People move for the school mm -hmm. systems, and we want to maintain that integrity and the reason that people move to our towns. Right, and Deb, from your point of view, uh, you're a member of the Salisbury School Committee, but obviously uh, a Salisbury representative on the Triton School School Committee, but obviously you represent the entire district. You don't just represent just Salisbury, obviously. Um, why do you see the need uh, to, to push this override to have this override be successful in the in the, in the towns well I'm I do not have any small children in the school mm -hmm. district but I have a very good perspective of the big picture because uh, my daughter did go to the Triton Regional Schools from mm -hmm. preschool right through uh, high school she received a wonderful education it was her senior year when we had a very serious budget situation before and at that time there were things that were eliminated from the budget and they take years to recover years mm -hmm. um, the performing arts were damaged because the programs at the elementary school were eliminated then you no longer have feeder programs going to the high school the marching band was taken out of the curriculum and became an extra which people then had to pay for and it's it creates if it's not passed it's not just next year, it's mm -hmm. years down the road. It has like a ripple effect. Yes, that, yeah. absolutely. And um, we've made a lot of progress in my 15 years mm -hmm. being directly involved. And we need to keep moving forward. 
And the, uh, the, the override question obviously comes up on all the, uh, the ballots at the same time. So it'll be on uh, May 8th in, in, in Newbury and in Raleigh and in Salisbury. It has to also go to town meetings. I know the Newbury town meeting is on uh, Tuesday, uh, April 24th. The uh, Raleigh town meeting is on Monday, April 30th. And uh, here in Salisbury, it'll be on uh, Monday, May 14th. Um, my understanding is that just two of the three towns have to support this, this venture, but the override. But we hope, obviously, that, and I imagine you all hope that all three uh, towns support support this. What about the the cost? And people say, well, how, my tax is going to go up. Um, you know, it'll go up uh, at, at about three hundred sixty thousand dollars in Newbury, and maybe uh, five hundred thirty-two thousand they say in Raleigh, and about eight hundred thousand dollars in Salisbury. Uh, how do you address that issue to people out there who say, geez, do, can I really afford uh, this this increase in in my town's taxes? What, what, what's the what's the answer to that? Or the response to, to that? Maybe I'm not sure who can answer that. Join our address. Sure, so when it breaks down to individual families, we're talking about in Newberry, um, an average of $122, um, and that we're talking about $2.35 a week, or just 33 cents a day. Mm. Um, in Raleigh, we're talking about um, an average of twenty-three fourteen per month, five thirty-four a week, or sixty-two cents a day. Mm. And in Salisbury, we're talking about um, three do three dollars and twenty-seven cents a week, or just forty-seven cents a day. So really, less than uh, uh, a cup of coffee at Cumberland Farms, right? Which you, you, can, you can you can you can help save the school system and, and promote. But I think I would argue. Our towns are buying a lot of cups of coffee. Sure. And so I'm not unmindful <laughs> mm. of all the expenses and all the overrides um, and the cost, the rising costs, uh, homeowner costs uh, uh, for Rowley, particularly electrical and water. Mm -hmm. But to not fund this override and not support the schools and cause these devastating uh, cuts, it just cuts at the heart of what our communities are and what they stand for, for, for family values and for strong community. It's, it's, I, yeah. I have a daughter, uh, a first grader, she's quiet, she's shy. A, a classroom of 35 kids isn't going to work. It's unimaginable. Yeah, it's yeah, unimaginable. Yeah. Like her mom, she's not great at math. She needs that extra supplement. She needs the WINS program that's now offered at the school. Mm -hmm. Without the WINS program, we'd be paying $100 a week for private tutoring. Mm -hmm. Not something my family can afford. Now, I imagine as you, uh, you know, crisscross your town and speak to people at the library or at the post office or uh, as part of the We Are Triton group, you run into folks who, who don't support it for whatever reason. What, what do you hear is the biggest opposition or the biggest reason that folks are saying that uh, we just can't support this, uh, this, this override? Um, well, I uh, am an admin for a Facebook page called Rally Talks, which mm -hmm. is dedicated to conversations in the rally community around enhancements, connections, um, and building community and bringing people into the process. Mm -hmm. I hear a lot, this override cannot happen. We cannot allow this to happen. We have so many expenses. We have to teach the schools how to cut back. I respect it. I think that's, a, I, uh, paying bills is tough. We've got, mm -hmm. um, you know, my husband is a stay-at-home father. That's a choice that we've made for our family. Sure. And it's extremely tough to make ends meet. But if we do not do this, what are we as a community? Mm -hmm. um, who are we as, as individual citizens? So it's a statement uh, for the community. It's a statement, absolutely. Um, I, uh, uh, when they talk about health care costs and teaching costs, uh, I was raised by a teacher. She raised our family, well, with my dad's help. But on a teacher's salary, these, sure. th this idea that we've, that, you know, these days of school moms who lived at home with their parents and could be paid $25 a week, mm. it's just not case. The reality is, is these teachers who are wonderful, loving people have families of their own, sure. and they have to be able to raise and take care of those families as well. And Jen, when you wear your hat as the, uh, you know, the We Are Triton chairperson, I'm sure you run into this uh, type of opposition. I'm sure there are mm -hmm. a lot of folks who support you and want to help your cause and help the cause of the override and make sure that it passes. But what are you hearing from those folks that, uh, that are, are not as supportive? Uh, what, what's their biggest um, opposition do you hear? Sure. I, I feel like there's... Um, one of the biggest pieces to our group is making sure folks are educated mm -hmm. as far as what they're actually supporting and what um, passing in the override entails. And for us, there's a misconception that by supporting this, it may cause other burdens throughout the other departments in the community. Mm -hmm. um, th that's one. That's one thing, and uh, that's absolutely. A 
it's it's just the opposite mm -hmm. by supporting this override not only are you supporting uh, the school budget and maintaining the quality education that we're looking for but it's also um, supporting those other community departments that we and have. again it increases the value of, of a person's home when you, you have oh, quality sure. education sure. and obviously that brings an additional tax revenue mm -hmm. whether it be business paying taxes or or, or residents paying taxes um, let's uh, say say that doesn't go through I mean obviously um, the, the school can have to go back and make these dramatic uh, cuts. I can remember, uh, it seems like a thousand years ago, but I was in the Lawrence School Committee in, in 1982, just after Prop 2 and a half had hit, and we had to cut millions from our budget, and we were nickel and diming and pencil sharpening and cutting this and cutting that, cutting that. And I can imagine, it'll be, as a school committee member, it will be devastating, I imagine, to, to go have to cut programs that you have relied on, the youngsters have depended on uh, for many years. Yes, that's true, um, and we, we just don't really want to cut any kind of programs sure. at all. It becomes very, very difficult. Um, we have a brand new stadium, athletic yeah. stadium, right. and we certainly want to use it. Sure. Um, so that's just kind mm. of not an option to cut an entire program. And we had one of your colleagues, uh, Monique Grelick, was in mm -hmm. on, a, on a local program here in Salisbury, and she talked about there were three budgets the school committee was looking at, offered by the superintendent, mm -hmm. and you chose this one at $41.3 million, and really, uh, by doing that, uh, you've uh, saved the potential of laying off some 51 employees in that uh, that budget. So that, that obviously was a, a middle row, but at least it affords a quality education uh, for the youngsters who attend the Triton School District, it appears, from what uh, the school committee has, has done in your vote? Well, that's true, but we went back and made cuts, mm -hmm. you know, uh, on a second round, sure. and that is making some eliminations, and we just don't really, nobody wants to One go any cuts, further yeah. than that, but um, two out of three towns have to pass the budget, right? and if the third town does not pass it, that third town has to pay the bill anyway. Sure. So it's really in all three towns' best interest to work together and be positive uh, about it. Um, the thing is, uh, the votes, there are actually six votes that have to happen. Right. People need to go to town meeting, mm -hmm. and it's essential that people go to town meeting and vote, and then they need to go to the polls. Um, I had a conversation with one of the building principals last week and um, she has found it amazing that there are people that are very supportive of the schools but have yet to go and vote for right. anything about the schools, whether it be at the um, polls or at town meeting. She also told me, uh, going, looking down the road on the value of your schools to the value of real estate, sure. she had a, a call from a family who was thinking about moving and putting their children in one of the school, the elementary schools. And the incoming, the potential incoming parent said, how many classes do you have per grade? Mm -hmm. She said, I have to give you two numbers. I will tell you if our override passes, we will have this many. Mm -hmm. If it does not pass, we will have this many. She felt that she had to give them honest information. Sure. But certainly if you have an elementary school of the size of any of our elementary schools with only two classes, potentially two classes per grade, the numbers are going to be much higher. And so a family hearing that is going to really think twice about moving into the school district and that's detrimental to everyone's mm. property values and the quality of life in the town. Now I know that the um, that we talked about the We Are Triton group has about 100 members or maybe more than 100 uh, volunteers. If someone out there is listening and would like to participate to help uh, in this effort, you maybe help make phone calls or whatever you're doing to help motivate people to get out so they, they are motivated to vote for the override at the polls and also at town meeting, what's the best way that they can, uh, can get in touch with you folks to, to help uh, this effort? Um, we have a website, wearetriton.org. You can log on there and all our contact information is um, listed under contact us. We also have a Facebook page, We Are Triton, so you could like that and follow along. I mean, it really, it comes down to something so simple as folks that support it to just carve out that time, mm -hmm. whatever their town meeting date is and their election date. And it may mean that you might you know, both both parents need to come, both adults need to come. Mm -hmm. It may mean you may need to bring your children. 
if that's the case, that's the case. I mean, it'll be a wonderful lesson in civics and, mm, sure. uh, um, you know, if you need to bring your devices that night, I'm sure that would be okay too. <laughs> but I mean, that is the that is the best, most powerful, and simplest way that people can contribute to the We Are Triton movement. And and certainly, we want people part of our team and spreading the word and sharing the knowledge as well. And will there be efforts prior to the uh, you know, the May uh, uh, vote at the polls to make phone calls or to stand outside the post office or uh, holding signs or uh, will those efforts kind of, kind of like a political campaign uh, will that take place? Do you, have, do you envision that taking place? A absolutely and um, we're in motion with all of that. Uh, we'll reach out to people yeah. every, every which way that we can. I think the superintendent uh, made an excellent uh, case in the first half of the program talking about the, the shift of the last 15 years from the, in, in, especially in Chapter 70, the state money that comes in to cities and towns and how there was a very high percentage of that money that would pay for a lot of the costs of quality public education. All of a sudden, that's just dramatically reduced and that burden has been shifted now to the towns. So you can imagine it as a selectman in town or, or a town manager, you know, having to now inc bear the increase of, the, mm -hmm. the, of that, those costs, you know, they're going up uh, exponentially in terms of health care costs and other costs, it uh, really, you can understand that someone's out there hesitancy you know, to support an override. But you, I think see, what I hear from you folks uh, is that you know, quality education, you, 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 you get what you pay for. You have to mm -hmm. pay for decent quality education and uh, we don't want to hurt other services, obviously, in town, but at the same time, uh, afford uh, people the opportunity uh, to have a decent quality education for their, for their, for their youngsters. Um, so we have the dates again, uh, Tuesday, April 24th in the Newbury. And uh, that's the town meeting date. We have uh, Monday, April 30th in Raleigh. Uh, in Salisbury, it is Monday, May 14th, the town meeting. And again, everyone goes to the polls on Tuesday, May 8th. Uh, gentlemen, I want to make a closing pitch to the undecided voter who's still listening out there and, uh, and wants, to, <laughs> wants to hear. Deb. This isn't necessarily a, a pitch, but I just wanted to touch on something that you mentioned earlier. Sure. There are serious funding shortcomings at the state level, mm -hmm. very serious, and we know that. We, meaning everybody at this table, mm -hmm. certainly all of the school board, and, and we all know that. Mm -hmm. And there are strong efforts being made statewide to change that mm -hmm. because, because everybody needs it. We happen to need it maybe more because we're a regional school, but all of the schools in the state need that. And it's, it's in the front pages of the newspapers today. Sure, yeah. So we're working on that. But that's going to take a little bit more time. And the school district really can't wait for that to happen at the yeah. state level in order to avoid some disastrous um, right. situations we need to, to take action now and control our own destiny in the, for the next year. I think that's such an accurate uh, point and such a valid point because you know, the fourth grader in fourth grade today is that is that fourth grader just once in his or her lifetime, mm -hmm. right? And then they go on to fifth grade, and then to sixth grade. And as you said earlier, Deb, uh, these ripple effects ha take years uh, yeah. to, to come back and to put programs that have been decimated back into a school system. And that fourth grader has been affected you know, by that cut, and the fifth grader and the sixth grader, and that third grader who became the fourth grader is affected. Um, any final words uh, to support uh, this effort, uh, folks out there in the, our three towns who are thinking about the, uh, voting for this? Uh, our kids are the future and they need the support of everyone in the town. Great, great. Well, I want to thank all four of you for being here today, offering your point of view on supporting the override. Again, the override uh, takes place, the override vote takes place at the polls on, uh, on Tuesday, May 8th, and again in your town, uh, also at the town meeting. It's so important to get out to support quality public education. I've been very happy to host uh, this program with the superintendent and these uh, young ladies, and we look forward to seeing you next time. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and don't forget to uh, make it your civic duty and get out and vote. Thanks very much.